she's my love. Today's a rainy day. I have my silly rain, rain uh, hat. And today's reading from uh, The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty is called Expectations of Others, a very important um, topic. And let me share with you a um, uh, dog point of view. So, I brought a blanket because it was raining. You can see beneath the table what's going on here. Can you see? So one of us here, oops, I don't know if you can see it. It's not too you see. There's Gosha and there's Shelby. Who has the blanket? One dog. The other dog is lying on the floor. So Shelby is unable to share. And Shosh has decided not to rest. What do you think? Well, this is the bully, you know, she's like taking over and at one point there's the saying that we teach others, we teach others how to treat us. In this case, this is exactly what happened. So, the smaller dog just took over, Shelby just took over and she has a blanket and the other one. And she's, when I try to move her, the other dog moves away. She's already learned to accept the role that she's the underdog and there's another dog. So this is part of the status quo we're talking about, about the packing order. And that, with wolves, it's different. You can see the alpha and then there's the ones underneath. And now Shosha has learned that she sometimes tries to fight back, but Shelby, the smaller dog, she's gonna she's gonna get a, the better position. She's gonna get the whole blanket. There's no sharing. She's sitting in a way that there's no way the other dog can be on the blanket. That's it. She showed her from day one. In fact, when Shosha got a bed la last winter when it was cold, she just um, showed her who's the boss by sleeping in her bed. So she has two beds, and Shosha has zero. Had to every time Shosha gets out of her bed, tick, she jumps in the bed saying, That's my bed, too. That's uh, you probably have experienced that with children who have a hard time sharing, adults that have a hard time sharing, and are very territorial. So, expectations of others. It is our job to identify our needs and then determine a balanced way of getting those needs met. We ultimately expect our higher power in the universe, not one particular person, to be our source. It is unreasonable to expect anyone or to expect anyone to be able or willing to meet our every request. We are responsible for asking for what we want and need. Dog can't do it, but we have to learn to do that. It's the other person's responsibility to freely choose whether or not to respond to our request. If we try to coerce or force another to be there for us, that's controlling. There's a difference between asking and demanding. We want love that is freely given. It is unreasonable and unhealthy to expect one person to be the source for meeting all our needs. Ultimately, we will become angry and resentful, maybe even punishing toward that person for not supporting us as we expected. It is reasonable to have certain and well-defined expectations of our spouse, children, and friends. If a person cannot or will not be here for us, then we need to take responsibility for ourselves. In that relationship, we may need to set boundaries, alter our expectations, or change the limits of the relationship to accommodate that person's unavailability. We do this for ourselves. It is reasonable to sprinkle our wants and needs around and to be realistic about how much we ask or expect of any particular person. We can trust ourselves to know what's reasonable. The issue of expectations goes back to knowing that we are responsible for identifying our needs, believing they deserve to be met, and discover an appropriate, satisfactory way to do that in our life. 
So today's reading, today I will strive for reasonable expectations about getting my needs met in relationships. So we can only expect from the other person what they're willing to give. No more, no less. So what do you think? How can, how can people uh, ask for what they need? How do you ask for what you need from other people? Uh, peace, love, and love, uh, and joyful holiday season.